Well, today we're taking a peek at the 2021 Toyota Sienna. This is the Platinum package, but let me tell you, they made some big changes in 2021, which was expected, we knew it was coming, but from 2020 to 2021, it wasn't just a small thing, it was massive, the amount of things that they made different on this vehicle. So let's, let's dig into it. Hey folks, welcome back to Tech Gooch. Today we're taking a peek at the 2021, the all new 2021 Toyota Sienna. Now, I own a 2020 Toyota Sienna. We actually made that purchase after I did the review of the 2020 Sienna. Um, we really loved the van. We knew that things were changing for 2021. We knew, or at least had an idea, that the all-wheel drive is going into a, a hybrid system. We didn't know everything about it. Uh, obviously, they didn't have a lot of stuff out there, but they had a lot of rumors. Uh, today, I'm taking a peek at the actual 2021 model, which has been out for a little bit now on the market um, since, well, since late last year. But now I'm actually taking a peek at it. We're going to go through, this video is going to be structured a little bit different than some of the other ones because I actually have a 2020 uh, and we're going to do a side by side comparison later in the video. So stay tuned to that. If you really want to see what's all changed since from the last. Uh, model variety to the current brand new model in 2021 starting in 2021 really um, we're going to go into that now the trim levels are obviously going to be a slightly different so this one's got some features that they did even offer in 2020 that i don't have on my my model i have an xle premium uh, so i didn't have well a few of the the niceties that the the limiteds had uh, but this they have they changed the, the model layout this year um, they have a limited but now they have their, well, their top of the line, the Platinum model, which is what I'm sitting in right now. Platinum model, kind of like the Limited had last year, has a specific leather interior that is offered basically color. This one's kind of like a, a, a brown with um, set kind of a cream. It's beautiful. I'll give it that. Uh, we really liked the, the brown type interior that they offered last year in the Limiteds, but we weren't able to, to get that one. But uh, that's neither here nor there. But we're going to go into it. We're going to step by, well, we're going to start by the biggest thing in the room and probably the biggest thing that you'll notice uh, in a difference between the older models and the newer model and that's the powertrain. So on this model they changed the engine, they changed the transmission, they changed the entire lineup of the drivetrain. This is a hybrid. Now they only offer the Sienna in a hybrid this year. So we went from the 3.5 liter V6 that we had on the previous generation to a 2.5 liter four cylinder, uh, basically coupled with the electronic motors. Uh, you can get this in front wheel drive or all wheel drive, but it no longer has, because it's because it's a hybrid now, we have the E uh, CVT transmission, so we no longer have the eight speed transmission. So things changed quite a bit. Now, you would think that things have changed specifically like you're not going to have as much giddy up or you're not going to have as much well in, in sienna terms this can tow just like my previous one can the towing capacity of this looks like it's basically the exact same i have i put a hitch on our sienna i actually did a video on that and um on geek smart but we actually pull our little camping trailer that i build uh -huh, on my camp geeks channel that i'm slowly building not a crazy heavy trailer, but this can pull just like that, 3,500 pounds. So you can do things with this van, even though it's it is a hybrid. The biggest difference that you're going to notice is, to be honest, I means small things and noise. But really, you're going to notice it at the pump. No longer are you talking, you know, around 20 miles to the gallon. Now we're talking 36 miles to the gallon. That is extremely noticeable and to be honest about it i've had this vehicle for almost a week and i have noticed it because my fuel gauge doesn't drop nearly as fast as my fuel gauge did on my my 2020 sienna and now don't get me wrong i love my 2020 sienna i really do and my wife loves it as well but since we've had this it makes you think maybe we should make the move to this because the hybrids give us everything that we want, we have in our current one, 
with the niceties of being able to be substantially more efficient. And look, I'm not gonna sit here and thump on the the earth and say, we gotta save the planet, we do, but I'm not gonna judge people on what they wanna drive and, and things like that, but the amount of money you can save per year in fuel costs from going from a traditional van from other providers as well to this hybrid van, it's not something to look away from. It is awesome. Now, one of the items that I really did notice, this is one of the big items that I noticed while driving, and that is the what they call the lane tracing assist. Essentially what it is, it's, it's a lane diverging assisting to keep you in your lane of travel. So the vehicle has sensors, it has a camera package sensor up here for all sorts of stuff, but it's monitoring like the divider lanes and the side of the lane and keeping you in your lane of, of travel. If you start going out in the 2020 model, my current van, it would nudge the steering wheel. Just a little nudge here or there, um, just to keep you in the lane of traffic. It wouldn't steer itself. I mean, it was not 100% guaranteed every time, um, but it was, it was nice that if you weren't paying attention for a second and you started drifting towards the center line or towards the ditch or the shoulder, it would give it a little, a little bit of adjustment. More than anything else, it got your attention. Because you had your hand on the steering wheel anyway, it got your attention. Fast forward to 2021. They changed this dramas, no, no, dramatically in that it does more now. It still essentially does the same thing. It is not a self-driving mode. It's not designed to be a self-driving mode. It's a lane departure assistant to keep you in your lane of travel. Now, when you actually signal to travel, like I'm going to transfer lanes from one lane to another, it won't assist in that, right? It's not going to try to correct you to keep you in the lane. It knows you're trying to get out of the lane. You're good to go. But if you don't signal and it notices you creeping, not only will it actually push you back over uh, to, in your lane of travel, it will vibrate the steering wheel to give you a second, basically more, a bigger alert to, hey, hey, things are happening that are not supposed to be happening here. Pay attention, right? Now, the other thing about that as well, it's substantially more reliable from what I've seen so far. And third, it does substantially more. And I kind of put it to the extreme test. We took a, a trip out of town by 20 miles and, uh, on the way out, I really was kind of toying with it, but on the way back is when I kind of put it to the extreme test in that I kind of let go of the steering wheel. Now, I kept my hands on the steering wheel because it's not a self-driving feature. It's not designed to be, but I kept my hands near the steering wheel, but I wanted to see what it would do. Um, and it kept me in that lane of travel. Even when I was going around a curve, uh, uh, in a big curve, and I'm on a highway here, and it was curving me around, it kept me in the lane of travel. It almost was self-driving. It's 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 getting there. They're they're getting more closer and closer to this. Now, as soon as I let go of the steering wheel, within a few you know so many seconds, it was alerting me, "Hey, get your hands on the steering wheel, right?" And it should because it's not self-driving. And you can't just place your hand on the steering wheel and just let it keep driving. It it needs pressure. It needs to know that you're actually in control to, to let you know. But the biggest thing about this is the to keep you in your lane of travel so that you have a less likelihood of crashing. This van is the best I've seen yet. Now, of course, I have not drive, driven any of the, you know, the Teslas and all the other fancy mode driving cars like that. I'm talking about vehicles, the, the run-of-the-mill vehicles and Toyota, GM, any of that stuff. This the assistance feature that this this package or this van has, I am incredibly impressed by it because the safety alone of keeping you in your lane of travel while still you having manual control of everything, it's it's quite fantastic. Okay, so let's go over some of the electronics right here. Uh, so we have the main radio, which is more looks like more of a tablet style, right? You can you can kind of see where it comes away from the dash. Um, it's a nice size display. It's got the full actual physical buttons on the side, on both sides. We actually have the dials. Now, if if you've watched my videos in the past uh, few weeks, I had the um, Toyota Venza, which had a nice new style widescreen display. I think that would work great in this van. Uh, we have a lot of dead space in here, to be honest, right? We can actually get a larger display in this. Um, I wish that Toyota would have put that similar display that the Venza has, but I will say that I prefer the knobs 
rather than all digital controls. So I do like that. I do like that they ca actually kept the physical buttons um, rather than just going to a, a touch uh, touch screen controls. So that's a big thing. Um, also uh, to note here, actually let me uh, turn off the van and I'll, I'll show you what I mean by this. Let me open the door so it thinks I actually left and came back. When you start the vehicle, this will tell you if there's if there's uh, seat belts actually fastened in the back seat. Uh, and so you can see there when I turn it on, it tells me all the information, those red indicators of the three back seats and then the two center ones, and just saying that nobody's buckled in the back seats. If people, if you know that there's somebody in these two seats and they're not buckled, that way you know it's just a nice uh, safety item. Uh, same thing when you leave or when you get to home and you put it in a park and you turn it off, you'll actually get an alert on the display to see if it'll actually do it. Um, no, probably not because nobody's in the back seat. If there's actually people in the back seat, uh, it'll actually say, hey, make sure you check the back seat. So it's just one of those nice safety features, specifically if you are uh, if you have kids, right? Um, so I'm going to kick it back on here so we have controls and everything. We have our uh, climate control stuff all right here for the rear, for the front. Each uh, person can actually choose their own temperature. Um, it's, you know, it's any of the nicer uh, full climate controls. We have heated and, co and uh, cooled seats, so we have three red lights for heat, three cool lights for the fan, um, auto, you know, more of the AC, uh, defrost, stuff like that. So all of our climate stuff is all right here. Pretty fast, quick, and easy to access. It, It's different than it was in the past. It's more compact. Um, you know, if nothing, this display works fine. I can't say it's my favorite display, but it, it definitely works. It's a simple uh, climate control display. So pretty pretty basic in that setting now the center console is way different than the 2020 model we're up here we are going to have a single usb port uh, that's going to be for our radio or for charging as well uh, we have our chi charger which look I've, I've said in some of my other videos it's great that they have it but it should be 15 watts it's not it's 10 and it doesn't like some of the new iPhones. That's what I found on my iPhone 12. Um, even in my last videos, I, I talked about it and then I didn't realize that if I left it on the charger for too long, it actually started blinking saying, oh, it's not charging. So um, there's a little power button up here. You can kind of see right here, the little green light. Um, basically I can turn that charging pad off and now it's just a dead space. But that shelf all the way across, definitely way new as well as the four cup holders up top here up front here I like this setup better than the 2020 to be honest about it you have a big bin underneath if you can kind of see that and uh, I'll try to get better pictures from uh, the side later um, but I do like this better than the previous one something that is different is uh, as well back here we actually have our armrests for one for each seat and then the center console bin container uh, we have a USB-C and a USB-A charger right here. If you can see that. All right, hopefully that comes through a little bit better. USB-C, USB-A, and a nice big bin down there. And then back here for the back seat, we do have, uh, again, USB-A, USB-C, one for each. And then back there, we'll have more stuff as well. So I'll show you that shortly. Um, this is a little bit different. Just because the armrests are sitting above it, it feels different. Um, it looks weird. Uh, but... Uh, I actually like it more than I originally liked it. Originally, I thought, oh, I don't know if I like this part of the whole console, to be honest. It's just kind of goofy. You can't raise or lower the armrests. They are exactly where they are. So that's something to say. Um, and same thing with these two cup holders here. We can, you know, we can level them off if we need to. I don't know if this is really necessary. I would probably get rid of this and make these two permanent cup holders kind of like these. Um, but, you know, they are what they are, um, essentially. So, yeah. So that's that. Uh, it is all hard plastic. They're, they really don't have any of the soft things, but they do have um, some friction pieces here for your cups, which actually work pretty good. And I guess if nothing else, for your phone, kind of like that, right? Or yeah, I have the 12 Pro Max, can't go sideways. Uh, same thing up here. So obviously they didn't design it for the larger phones, they designed it for the smaller phones. <laughs> Down on the lower shelf here, we have, that's our, our 12 volt outlet that is, is located right down here below. As all the hybrids, we have our EV mode, our drive mode, you know, sport mode, regular mode, uh, eco mode. We get, uh, the hold button is kind of neat, the power, power parking, button, parking brake button here. Hold button essentially is kind of neat. So if you're actually on like a hill or something, if you uh, 
have the brake on, you hit the hold button, you can actually have the vehicle hold the brake for you. And then as soon as you hit the accelerator, it'll actually turn off that brake feature. Uh, it's just one of those nice things so that you're not constantly having to do things. Uh, I'm, I'd rather just hold the brake myself, but it is there. Let's talk about the lower left part of the dash here. We have our traction control, automatic high beams, AC outlet, which is gonna be in the back, heated steering column or steering wheel, uh, our 360 camera view, which all the higher end Toyotas have now, um, lights, uh, you know, odometer trip, uh, gas uh, door, and then the power sliding doors either on or off. You can have manual or power, it's your choice. Let's talk about those 360 cameras real quick. I'm gonna kick them on, and so we'll actually do the go around now I'm not gonna go into this crazy because we've been I've been doing this a lot on all my videos I really like these cameras um, I think they are fantastic for showing you uh, any keep basically keeping your situational and awareness better um, but we can actually pull up uh, let's see here different uh, ways to look at it we can also when we actually put it in drive or put it in reverse um, you know it's gonna kick on uh, certain ways to look at it We can select here and just if we want to see one way over the other or we have the overview it just gives you that uh, ability to see a lot more and then of course if there's anything that actually comes up on your sensors uh, that is close it's going to automatically pop up on the display for you similarly with the rear view mirror we have our home link and our, our settings here and we uh if we hit any of these buttons we can change any of the settings on this but like the other eyes these these new mirrors they pop in and you can actually have a camera view. These are really handy, specifically if you have a bunch of stuff in the back where you can't see out the back window. This is, gives you a really good view. Or if somebody's tailing you or something that's below an area that you can't see, this is obviously lower than where the window is. So it's just, you can see a lot more with those uh, with that camera. This is the overhead console. We have our lighting control if we want them on or just when the door is open or off altogether. Uh, we can actually change the uh, sunroof if we want to open or if we want to just vent it or if we, you know, if we need to close it. The lid itself is actually manual, uh, which I like. I like this, you know, obviously this is a smaller one so we don't need to have something that goes way back. Uh, but these are the controls here for it. Same with the, the back doors. It's not just a button now. It's this is actually a closed side and an open side. I like this button better than the older ones. Uh, then we have our rear hatch as well, so we can actually open and close the rear hatch from in here. Also, we have our conversation mirror, which I have always disliked, but you know they're they're there for you. Steering wheel we have similar to all the the newer style Toyotas. Um, my 2020, I I like. The stick for my um, cruise control more than I like this buttons here but it's again it's not a big deal I, you get used to this and it is what it is but I do want to point out that it is completely different and the driver controls information stuff a um, lot of information right so we can actually see our our fuel economy eco guidance digital speed so right now I'm just paying attention to fuel economy which I've been pushing it so either higher or lower but around I'm getting around 35 miles to the gallon if I, if I let it do its thing, which is really close to its 36, but in where I live, we never get what we what they slate at least. Um, driving support, this is gonna be your lines where it's, you know, you're gonna actually see if you actually have, if you have that uh, lane assist uh, turned on, that's where it's gonna show you, and especially with the, when it locks onto a, a line. Audio right now, I have it off. The driver center, all wheel drive mode, energy monitor, it's gonna you know, keep track of your PSI and your tires, basically just all the information on your vehicle itself. Whether or not you have the pre-collision system turned on, uh, blind spot monitoring, all these things. Oh, let's go back, see if there's anything else in there. Nope. Uh, this is where you can turn all those sensors on, including the, uh, the HUD, or the heads up display, which I'll show you here shortly, which is, on all new Toyotas, it's pretty simple, and I love that that HUD or the the HUD is, is is awesome. As for dials themselves, while you're driving, you can see if you're in eco or power, how much basically how much acceleration you're doing, and then if you're actually charging, it's going to dip down into the charging section down here. Engine temperature, which right now we're pretty cold because we've been on a lot of electric. We actually have a, a analog speedometer, and then our fuel gauge. Now, fuel gauge obviously down there is not much off of full even though I've had it for about a week and I put a decent amount of miles on it but uh, I'm impressed by how 
economically efficient this vehicle is. Now to get some different features for the back seat. For one, we have this gigantic grab bar now on both sides, which is way different. Um, really nice for people that have a hard time getting in and out. I like the addition to this. I don't use it, but um, I know my, my mother, my grandmother would definitely use it every time. The power door button to shut and close the door now is a lot further down. It used to be a lot higher, uh, so it definitely would take some getting used to it being as low as that. You can see it's basically below my knee level. Um, it does. This one does have the entertainment system, so it does come with the wireless headphones. In this case, it actually came with four pair. I know mine came with two. Uh, we do have our shades, which uh, we have on ours as well love these these are fantastic specifically if somebody's actually back here watch a movie and that's the other thing is the display the screen is so much bigger on this this one than it is on ours now we have the the wide screen one that actually you can do up to two um displays at once nobody ever used the two displays at once so having one gigantic one way way better uh and then if we come up here we have controls for the heating and cooling system but also uh, seat heaters we have seat heaters on both of the mid uh, tier seats as well uh, and then of course this is where you can do your climate control on both sides independent as well rather than just one overall back control down here on the center console on the back side of the center console this is where we have our ac plug which we can control up front and then this is where your hdmi input now is uh, for the back seat way better than having it on the 2020 way up down below down where that dc plug was up there that's where the hdmi is on the 2020 so for the front seat driver so of course you're not really supposed to do that while you're driving way better to have the passengers do uh, the plugging in of devices the back back seat back here we have on the right side we actually have usb-c usb-a charging and then volume for your headphones if you want to plug in your own pair of headphones and then the same thing over here, we just have the volume control and a plug for headphones. Single cup holder on the left side or driver's side, technically two, although I wouldn't call this technically a cup holder unless it's a small juice box or something. Um, but that's on the, uh, passenger, on the uh, yeah, passenger side. Back here, because the windows are smaller, we have smaller um, window shades, kind of angled, kind of neat cut to size. But definitely the windows back here are a lot smaller, but the roof is coming down a lot more than it did on the 2020. So just to go over a few things real quick, because we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison, but we again, we have our cameras in the front and the back, so there's our front camera, our main sensor here. Obviously a lot different looking this year, as with all the Toyotas with the 360, we have our other under mirror cameras. The green that they have this year is, in my opinion, even way better than last year's green, and we liked last year's green even. But uh, it definitely stands out beautiful looking vehicle and then as for those rear cameras we actually have two one is going to be for that mirror mode where you know you're seeing directly behind you and then the other one's more for the 360 camera for backing up seeing the ground rather than just directly behind you so for driving wise it drives very similar other than the advancements in technology um, and the differences in the noise that the vehicle makes uh, you have the hybrid noises where you have the electric motor and the gas motor that actually makes some various uh, sounds that sound quite a bit different than our current one or than the 2020, the, the gasoline version. But all in all, the handling, very, very similar. Um, you can't tell a whole lot of crazy differences in weight or anything like that. Um, at least to me, I can't. But I, I like it. I like it a lot. It it's, it's drives fantastic, and uh, yeah, the improvements in technology and efficiency, well received. Now, I am not touching the steering wheel, but I'm definitely hovering over it because I don't want to, I want to make sure that I have full control, but it is literally driving for me here, and you're going to see here in a second, it's going to tell me to get my hands on the wheel. There we go. LTA, hold the steering wheel. All right, so I can hold the steering wheel. But if I don't hold it, it's literally gonna stay in this lane for me. I don't really have to do a whole lot of anything. So essentially, I keep my hands on the steering wheel, maintain control, but it's gonna do a lot of the work for me, at least um, when I'm, you know, when you're just kind of brain 
going on the interstate or whatever, it's going to assist you. Now, you're not going to want it to let it just drive for you because it's not a self-driver. And I'm not trying to say that, but I'm just trying to reiterate that this thing is definitely, it knows where the lane dividers are. It knows where it's supposed to be. Um, so it allowing you to keep, you, or I should say, you allowing it to keep you safer is always, always pretty awesome. All right, I want to show you what the heads-up display looks look like when we're on cruise control. So left-hand side, we have the linear bars or the, the vertical bars that are showing that it's actually seeing the lane dividers and it's going to help me stay in those lanes. The three horizontal bars are actually for the, the adaptive cruise control and I can set the, that distance here on the stereo, one, two, or three bars for distance to keep me behind that vehicle. Then below that in the, the smaller print, is what I have my cruise control set to, 55 miles an hour. You can see the speed limit sign there, 55 miles an hour. And of course, the actual speed that the vehicle is going, well, right now, 56 miles an hour. And then we have our eco bar below that. Uh, right now, we're in eco. Um, if it, we're going up a real deep hill and it has to pump up the volume, it'll go into power. Uh, and then, of course, when we're braking, it's going to charge mode. I did just want to point out as well, in the driver's cluster at the top row, you can see that same information we saw in the heads-up display. So it is in multiple locations. So I'm actually heading back home right now, uh, and then we're gonna set these two vans, the 2020, which I own, and the 2021, right next to each other. And we're gonna look at the differences between the two. So that's next. And here we are, 2020, 2021. They don't look alike. They are absolutely different in about every way. It looks, feel, but the drive similar. So let's go over some of the differences. So some of the obvious things, obviously, is how it looks on the front. Uh, we have drastically curvier lines on the new one, um, but we still have a lot of the same aesthetic options where like the, the larger grill option on the bottom there, very similar there. Um, I don't have the 360 camera, so the, small, the camera there on the front there, I don't have, but it would be similar if I did. Uh, now, they are both all wheel drive, but they don't say it in the same location, so the badge locations have changed. Mine's up front here. Um, you can see the mirrors are different. We actually now have lighting on here on the side, where on mine it does not. Uh, the green, you know, this is the a lot more toned down. The new one's a lot richer. I like the richer green. I think it looks a lot better. Um, obviously, we have that um, heads-up display system, which you can see right there. That's that's going to be in the new one. That's not available. Was not available in the older one. So that's awesome, uh, an awesome ing included feature on there. But a lot of small aesthetic changes, obviously. The same thing happens when we go to the back end. So this is the 2020 here. The 2021, a lot sleeker again. A lot more, uh, I guess, aggressive lines on this guy. We have the. Um, hybrid badge and the all-wheel drive badge over here. We have the X, uh, XLE all-wheel drive. Now they don't have an XLE option this year. They changed the lineup, so they are a little bit different, um, but very similar at least in well in color. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the new one obviously has a lot more technical features. Uh, let's open up the back. Now currently we have our seats down, but if I was to put them up. Uh, we have, you know, just the, the standard tilt down headrests, um, but quick and easy and, you know, quite a bit of storage to be honest about it. Uh, we have, we don't have the the seventh passenger, or uh, eighth, pa eighth passenger, I'm sorry, the eighth passenger option where they had a seat that, that could stow in there. We don't have that on our van, but that's where that would go. We do have the 12 volt plug and the 110 plug back here. And on the new one. First option, uh, this is it was an option for a lot of things, but this is a net that can go across. I'm going to just get that out of the way for us. So you can see we have the seats here. Uh, we do have a uh, 110 plug, but you can see that's actually a, a grounded option now, uh, where it wasn't before. This one actually has these tubs that are built in back here, but they just actually take this count the space where your seats would actually go. So if you don't stow your seats often, this is an optional piece. Uh, obviously, it comes with the Platinum Series, but um, that is something that you probably add to either the lowest end piece. I'm just going to set those off to the side here, and we're going to see how this one actually folds down. We can grab onto it, and very, very similarly how it actually goes down. Let me come back over here. So the, 
the put down system hasn't really changed and then you still have the, you know the cover that goes there this guy same thing cover that goes there but to go back up same item here bring it back up headrest have changed a little bit but not too much essentially it's the same system just you know slightly appearance different now you can see here we do not have that same cubby cut out that we have on ours um, obviously there's something back here okay it's the, it's the spare tire that is a uh, very well used area to keep your spare tire that's awesome so speaking of the of the spare tire that's that's a huge difference because these are just traditional tires then uh, whereas on the 2020 when you had the all-wheel drive you got your run flats right so these tires are more expensive um, because you don't have a spare so in the back on the other side that's where your battery is uh, because it's not actually under the the hood now I see where it is interesting they put that back behind the rear wheel and I also put uh, the netting back in so you can kind of see what it looks like when everything's said and done. Uh, we also have the button here now that not only can close, but if you tap it twice, we'll even lock your vehicle. I'm just going to do it once just to close it. That's what the new rear end or tailgate area looks like on the, the brand new Sienna. Another small difference um, to, now I have power doors uh, enabled on mine as well, um, but I have to actually pull the handle to get the power door to engage to get into the actual back. And then you can see the seats that we have here. On the new Sienna, we actually have the option of pushing the button here on the handle. Rather than actually pulling on the handle, you can just push the button. And if you actually are close enough, even the vehicle's locked, it'll actually unlock and open it just by pushing the button as long as the key's in the area. The rear seats are obviously a little bit different as well um, because we have cup holders kind of in that area. Uh, and then the same thing on the door, that's also the same cup holders in the front there. And then we have the power area. So things are, you know, different but similar. Um, ours actually has a flip up cup holder area. The new one is not, it actually is just built in, which to be honest is, is all you really need. Oh, sorry, I don't know how well that could see with the, with the sun, how it's blowing up. Um, but yeah. Other big item here on the rear doors, you actually have speakers now. Uh, before, you did not have those options. We, uh, we have the circular vents for the rear system. Uh, ours, our controls, like uh, before, are over to the side just so the one passenger could actually get access to them. Now they have them in the center, way better. Uh, and they're actually doing the rectangular type. So a lot of upgrades, a lot of thought went into this. And like I said before, we have the ultra wide screen here, which actually has two screens or one that just goes in the middle or you could stretch it or whatever. But no reality, you just had one center screen. That's where it, because the kids always watch the same thing. So we had a lot of dead space before. And just to compare again, you know, a lot larger display, a lot easier to see. It's just, it's just a better setup. I mean, they, they thought of a lot more when they did this van um, with how it's actually used versus how it could be used. Because, yeah, the widescreen setup of having two, oh, we have two people watch different things at the same time or whatever. Nobody ever does that because it'd be very distracting. The other thing, though, is how to open that side where you can see there's a little uh, wand thing. And that's if you have your hands full of stuff, you can actually kick underneath there and it'll open it up for you. I have to get that down. I'm gonna read it's just Yep, it's just I mean it just takes a second. That's pretty awesome. I mean I like that. So the old one is a little higher riding. It rides off the ground a little bit more. You have a little taller uh, space than the, the 2021 does. But that kind of goes hand in hand. With the hybrids, we're also talking about making it as efficient as possible, so as least wind resistance as possible. And they, you know, it's it's not drastically noticeable, but when you're sitting in it, you can tell that you're a little closer to the roadway than on the older models. So that is, and if you follow the curvature of it, you can actually see that my, my even my, uh, my windshield is a steeper, slightly steeper incline. And then same at the back, we can see that mine's definitely taller 
than the new 2021 model, which is also why the rear windows are a lot smaller on the new one than they are on the old. You have more space back here. So the cubic inch area, I think, in the, the older 2020 model is definitely a little bit larger than, than the new one. So in the end, what does it mean? Well, on the new one, we actually have 33 and a half cubic feet of storage behind the rear seat. However, on mine, I have 39 and a half. Definitely more storage room. Now, I'm not gonna say that it feels so much smaller than mine. It definitely feels slightly smaller. I'll give it that. Um, but, the, I mean, if you look at the numbers, it's definitely smaller. It's, it's what it is. It's shorter, it's, it's got a little bit lower ground clearance, but obviously the, 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 everything added together changes how everything's perceived. Um, I don't know. I'd take the new one, to be honest about it. Yeah, I have a little more, a little higher, a little, uh, definitely in the roof line, definitely more headroom. But I really like this van. So that is the 2021 Toyota Sienna. Pretty awesome. Um, lots of love about this guy. They did a lot of improvements, a lot of technological improvements over the old one. You know, this guy, we're lucky to get 17, 18 miles a gallon in the city. I would say 17 and a half on average in town. Uh, on the highway, we're probably looking at 21, 22, even though it's rated um, at 24. We never really ever get the actual fuel economy because we're not running at 55 miles an hour. We're running faster. We're running 65 or 75, somewhere in there, uh, depending on where you are. This guy is rated at 36. We've been getting 35 no matter where we go. So the fuel economy on this one alone the cost of ownership to run this year to year, this one's going to far exceed the cost, or I should say exceed the savings. It's going to be a lot cheaper to run year to year than the older one. Now, I still love this van. I really do. But there's a lot to love about the new 2021. So with that said, guys, that's the end of the video. Questions, comments, please let me know. Subscribe if you can. Give the thumbs up to the video. And make sure you come back to TechGooch for another future review on another vehicle. I don't know what's in, what's coming up yet. I haven't had. I don't have the next one planned, but there's sure to be one soon. So, thanks for watching. As always, we'll catch you here another time. See ya.